Shulni University. I welcome you all today, and I am proud to announce that School of Law Shulni University is starting its very own first knowledge sharing session, in which we will be having renowned academicians and legal luminaries, not across India but across the globe, to share their valuable inputs, thoughts on different legal issues, be it cyber laws, be it criminal law, be it constitution. And in the very first session, it's my privilege and honor that we have a very good friend of mine, Professor Sebastian Lafferens from Canada, joining back from Canada in very, very we are today on our request. So it's a true honor. Just to the introduce- The honor is mine too. Thank you, Seb. Thank you for joining us. Just to introduce Seb, a little bit about him from the ocean of knowledge that he has accumulated. I'm just, I would like to share that he is also a law graduate and also a student of masters now from the university there in Canada. And presently he's the crown counsel, that is the prosecutor of the public prosecution survey of Canada. And along with that, he's also a professor of law at University of Haiti. Proud moment here that he also sits now as an expert member of the expert panel on law, technology, and international affairs of the Indian Society of Inter Artificial Intelligence and Law. And he's also a member of editorial board of the Vietnamese Journal of Legal Sciences. True pleasure is ours because also he, is, he has been a part-time professor of the University of Ottawa from 2008 to 2009. He was also, he has published several books several research papers to his credit. And most interestingly, I tell you, he is a polyglot, what I'm told. Yes, he is. But, it's, he, that's it's correct. Getting, it's getting famous in India nowadays that Seb is a master of almost 25 languages across the world, out of which I'm told that 18, in 18 of those languages, is really fluent. So very, very true honor is our Seb. I can only talk to you in one language that I know. I cannot <laughs> add any other language to this. But yes, you have here a knowledge ocean of 18 languages and 25 to the total count. Great, Seb. So Thank with you this, very much. <laughs> with this small background, a very, very brief background, I'm just inclined to know that, yes, Seb, what attracts you to India with this background and with this knowledge of constitutional laws, because I've heard you in many of those webinars across India, you've been talking on uh, the constitutional laws, comparative criminal laws. So what attracts you to India particularly, Seb? Uh, I have to say, I, I well, first of all, I, I started also, I just started, so I, I, I don't know much, but pro I promise I, I will be knowing way more in a year or two, but I started learning Hindi, uh, including the alphabet, including everything. So I, when I learn a language, I take it very seriously. Uh, but I just started, so I, I don't, almost, I know almost nothing, but I, I will. In a year or two, uh, I'll speak. Um, what attracted me to, to India is, the first time I went to India was to give a lecture in 2016. And I, I expected a, cultural shock uh, and I, I didn't have one. Um, I was surprised uh, because basically where I, when I give my lecture, I, I've seen obviously amazing people, but I also have met very keen to learn students, very dedicated people. But what I've seen the most is brothers. Yes, we're the two ends of the world, uh, Basically, your climate is totally different than ours. Uh, we are freezing uh, <laughs> for many months throughout the year, but it doesn't matter what's in our heart, what's in our soul, and what's in our, what's in our laws. Uh, uh, constitutional, criminal, uh, several things are quite identical. Yes, there are differences, uh, but these differences, in my opinion, should enrich the debate and not pull us apart. So it's, it, that's what I noticed. So what attracts me to India is obviously it's rich culture. I visited, I had the, the, the pleasure that, that I was amazed that I had a cultural shock, not because it was a shock, but 
because I, I was so impressed. I was speechless. I visited uh, the Taj Mahal. Uh, it was beautiful. Of course, it is beautiful. It was gorgeous. Also visited Delhi and several locations. Um, but again, what I've seen is that India and Canada are brothers. When it comes to law, uh, one can certainly enrich and, and make the other uh, better in, in many ways, or if not better, at least the understanding of the other system or constitutional criminal law, etc., will help definitely to make, uh, that's what we do in comparative law, right? So we, we use other laws, not necessarily to copy it, but to make ourselves better in a way either to distinguish ourselves or to, to copy it sometimes, but not always, it's not necessary. But India and Canada, I say it again, were brothers, uh, were so close. We, uh, we have the same legacy of the British Empire. We yeah. inherited many different things. Uh, we have similar issues. We'll talk about it later, hopefully today, uh, briefly. But there's so many things that the same issues that we are facing. So sometimes we think we're unique. We're better. We're the best. So Indians are the best. Canadians are the best. Yeah. But beyond thinking about the we're the best kind of thinking, uh, why don't we just take a step back in a humble way and say, well, why shouldn't I learn from my brother, either from a Canadian or an Indian, uh, who has a lot to say about the law, about its own law, but let's keep an open mind. Let's keep an open ear to listen, to learn, to evolve, and uh, to be potentially even influenced uh, by, by the law and the culture as well as uh, of other countries and, and like India specifically. So okay. the, the last thing I, I would say, uh, maybe a, the biggest difference but beyond the climate, of course, the population. Uh, India's population is simply huge. Uh, Canada's population is around 35 million, maybe a bit more nowadays, but it's not a big country. So Indians may be tempted to put aside Canada. Yeah, Canada is a second rank player. Canada, besides the United Kingdom, besides the United States, besides uh, France even, Germany even, this is not, when you think about the law, this is not a country you would necessarily resort to. In Canada, we have the same mindset. India is far, India is different. India has a different culture. What I say as I say, no, we don't. Actually, because of our legacy, firstly, because of our traditions, legal traditions, we have many things to learn from each other. Okay, yes. So I can also see from the very first slide of yours with the, both the flags flowing together, and I, yes, I can read that how similar are the Indian and Canadian laws. So this will be the background of a short interaction with you, uh, Professor Sebastian here now. And yes, uh, particularly both the countries, I know that yes, are culturally very, very rich. So yes, the countries which are culturally rich, they are rich in everything. They have a good legacy. So with this background, I just need to ask because we have most of the author, most of our audience here are the law students, law graduates, academicians. So I would just like to ask, is it fair to say that India and Canada are long lost siblings? What does it mean, Sebastian? And how does it apply here? Well, I mentioned, and I just uh, moved on uh, the PowerPoint, but I mentioned the geographical distance and, and the temptations to conclude that India is so different and Canada is so different. Yeah. that we're not really similar, not enough to really resort to our, to, to the other countries' laws for Indians to resort to Canadian law and vice versa. But let me give you one, one example. Multiculturalism. Uh, multiculturalism is something that is fundamental in Canada uh, it is uh, protected by the Constitution under Section 27 of the Charter of Rights uh, and uh, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which was enacted in 1982. 
Um, it is also, there's also a, uh, and uh, basically uh, it, the, it, the, all the constitution, what it says, section 727, is that the constitution must be interpreted always keeping that, basically I'm, I'm speaking in plain English here, but, uh, showing this respect for the constitution, but in plain English, section 27 says, when you interpret the law, the constitution, you always have to have multiculturalism in the back of your mind. And, and the same applies somehow in India. Canada is a multicultural country. It is what makes it perhaps different, but not so much from India, is that Canada is a bilingual, official, officially bilingual country with French and English as official languages. Uh, the the my, ethnic minorities languages are not protected, but multi, their culture is according to the charter. There's also equality rights that is protected by section 15 of the Canadian Charter of Rights, which also, of course, includes no discrimination with respect to race. And the exact same concepts, the exact same ideas are uh, included in the Indian Constitution. Um, and why? Well, Canada is by definition now, should we say, a multicultural country. India is also a multicultural country. Like it's so huge, there are so many different cultures, so many languages spoken, but in Canada, the same, almost the same applies. So we're not in the case where like Japan or Hungary or even Sweden, not Sweden, not so, not so much nowadays, but, or we're not in the case where countries are almost, and that, that I know it goes away more and more, but India and Canada are examples worldwide of how and, and, and about the practices on how to deal and legally address multiculturalism. So to answer your question directly, we're long lost siblings basically because <laughs> as I said initially, we're, we inherited the, the same legal culture, but we made it our own. So yes, both of our countries have been, well, Canada didn't exist. It was created by the British and the, and the French initially, but uh, both countries tried as their own way, their own approach of approaching the law, but still keeping in mind the British tradition, not necessarily disregarding what the British uh, put in place basically as a system. The common law is obviously the first, the first thing you may think about, but also there are, there are different things, several pick more peculiar particular elements that we should talk about today, but uh, we should never forget about that. So that makes us, so uh, brothers, like I said initially, but why long lost? Long lost because as I said, we Indians and Canadians don't think spontaneously that we're so similar. We should share more with each other. We have, uh, no, it's not something that comes to mind automatically. Uh, yes, uh, Canadians are fascinated for the most part by India, by the, 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 the fact that its culture is so rich, so diverse, but lawyers would not necessarily use, for example, cases of the Supreme Court of India to argue cases in Canada or at least to show a comparison. But let me remind the audience, mostly comprised of students and academics here. Both our countries have a last resort court, which, is, which hears all cases at the end of the day, when at the end of the, <clears throat> the judicial process, when it gets there, and both courts, are very important, very well respected, uh, very well skilled uh, in comparison to other countries. These are the Supreme Courts of both our countries, the Supreme Court of Canada, the Supreme Court of India. Uh, e even though there are somewhat differences, there are many more judges at the Supreme Court of India than the, we have at the Supreme Court of Canada. There are only nine judges. Uh, it, it may be explained by 
the fact that the population is way bigger in India. It's not the only explanation, obviously. But again, we have so many things in common. So when I first time, the first time I went to India, that's the shock I had. It's like talking to brothers, understanding exactly what Indian academics was ta were talking about. Like, to the T, everything I, I picked up, yeah, there are differences. We'll see a few of them today, hopefully. But again, we should know uh, and learn more about each other. So that's why I, I would qualify India and Canada as it was qualified before. I'm not the first one to, to have... Uh, qualified it this way. I just want to give the credit to, uh, to the master student who put it in her thesis, thesis, I'm sorry. So that's why I'm saying we are indeed long lost siblings. But what I'm suggesting is let's reunite. Let's bring the family together. Let's have a positive outcome out of this. And let's not say, yes, we're different. Let's keep it like that. No, let's work to bring us together. Yes, Sam, I totally agree with you. It seems from your talk also that, yes, we are long lost siblings. And of <clears> course, <throat> when, you, when you said that the Supreme Court, and that is the apex court in India, has utmost respect in everyone, <clears throat> in every mind here in India also, so is in your country also. So now, and yes, I saw that multi, multiculturalism that you told, and the multicultural countries, exactly. I did tell you for that.